Hello, welcome to our 11th lesson on GCSE families. I am going to be going over this topic rather quickly, or this lesson, should I say, rather quickly. Um, it's just a bit of reading, getting our head around the theoretical perspectives on divorce. So, uh, first things first, what I would like you to do is to do a mind map or list, simply list, all the positive and negative outcomes for divorce. These can be um, a range of different things, and yes, when we are talking about something such as divorce, we've got to be a bit mindful of, um, I guess, being a little bit sensitive about this. Granted, we're not in class right now, so it's not as much as of a concern, uh, because normally in class you've got people who are affected by this. Uh, fortunately, I'm of the position where um, I haven't experienced it with my parents, but certainly my grandparents um, have gone through this and it has affected the the wider family. So if you're going to talk about negative outcomes, you can talk about, well, what are those negative effects going to be? Um, you can say, like, for example, it creates a lot of tension uh, between other family members. Uh, you can talk about how it affects children, finances, uh, but there are positives uh, that it can be argued where divorce could mean that and people who are in an unhappy place uh, can eventually get out of that situation to then get them into ourselves into a happy place. Um, you could argue that uh, it could be more healthy, more beneficial for people um, to go their separate ways. Uh, there are a number of different reasons that you can talk about. So, uh, I personally hold a position that like divorce should be a really ultimately a very last resort, and that there's, you know, it, you know, a look for me like a lot of relationships are workable through, and that really, it you know, the ones which should be ending are the ones that are like where there's abuse, or if there's like uh, adultery, like when the one couple person's being unfaithful to the other. Um, yeah, but I think if, if, like, this is just me again, personally speaking, that if there's, uh, you know, if there's just arguments and stuff that they can still be worked through and ultimately you want to try and avoid divorce as much as you can. So, um, hopefully you've got a few different reasons for that. Right, so let's look at our learning objective today. So we want, I want you to be able to answer this question, which is how do different theoretical perspectives explain how and why divorce happens? So I've already mentioned that we need to be uh, sensitive. Uh, I want you to be able, to, by the end, to identify positive and negative outcomes of divorce. That's what we're talking about just then. But hopefully your list is a lot longer than what I have. If you can think of, and we're going to go back to that list. We're going to keep adding on to that list. So if you hear or uh, read anything that is new that you could add to that list, I want you to do that. Um, I want you uh, to do some theory reading. So there's going to be a bit of reading out of our booklets uh, and there's going to be a bit of a recap and application uh, applying your past knowledge to divorce uh, and apply the theory task to those positive and, and negative outcomes. So when you're reading this stuff, add it to your positive and negative outcomes and there's going to be a little bit of mini homework that you will need to do. It's quite easy. Just do a reading and then there's, I think there's 10 multiple choice questions. No, sorry, true or false questions. So super easy. Right, let's get straight into this. So we're going to look at the application to divorce. Here we go. So the functionalist theory. The functionalists uh, see society as we know as a complex system. So you have a whole bunch of different functional prerequisites. So, for example, there are systems of socialization, which the family is the, the, the key um uh, the key driving force behind that. You've got key institutions such as the family, education, healthcare in place, and they ensure that society is stable uh, and it's based on a common value and common consensus. Anything that really disrupts this is seen as dysfunctional. So they see the nuclear family as the cornerstone of society. It provides the key function of primary socialization, as mentioned. However, functionalists recognize the evolutionary change of society. So there are changes in laws. Okay, and this does include divorce law, and next lesson we'll talk a lot about that. Uh, though um, positive, not necessarily dysfunctional. 
because they believe humans or you know that we lack free will they see changes in law as representing the natural growth of human society so because divorce has become more commonplace and uh, uh, well previously was more commonplace it's less commonplace now believe it or not um, back in the 60s 70s 80s much higher than it is today much much higher so they the, so it's kind of giving you a sense of how society is feeling about marriage so continuing on uh, functionalists, they, they see the nuclear family as the, oh wait, have I already read, oh okay, I've already read that, I've doubled up there, therefore divorce represents a positive function for society, so when you have fewer dysfunctional families, it means you've got fewer children growing up in these negative environments, so it, if you've got lots of families that are unable to divorce, it means you've got all these dysfunctional families going on, so they're saying divorce helps remove those dysfunctional families from existing, um, that is an argument that could be made. There are lots of arguments that can go against that. Um, and this contributes to the stability of society overall. The divorce industry employs many people and employment is a functional prerequisite. So Parsons argued that higher rates of divorce represent the higher value people place on divorce and rates of remarriage suggest that marriage is still important. So marriages, remarriage is very common, very, very common. Okay, so let's look at the Marxist theory. I've got Cato there reading Karl Marx. So Marxists argue that society is based on the conflict of interest between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. Um, the conflict of interest includes the struggle for the bourgeoisie to maintain their wealth and resources. So they argue that ruling class ideology ensures that all people in society are struggling for resources trying to maintain their wealth. The ruling class ideology is the uh, beliefs that are held by the ruling class and they're sort of passed down to the lower classes. It's so um, the lower class, the idea of wealth being important held by the upper class is also held by the lower classes. So even though the truth is that a fair distribution of wealth will only be achieved once the pro uh, proletarian revolution is fought and a communist society is created. So they see divorce as evidence of ruling class ideology infected the values of married couples. So couples are fighting for resources and power in their married relationships as ruling class ideology is so strong it dominates even inside private relationships such as married ones. So therefore Marxists see divorce as the outcome of these struggles for power when the couple can't come to an agreement. So divorce is a negative feature of capitalist society because it represents the depths that the ruling class ideology can reach. So you can see how much the Marxists hold money or uh, should I say the economy as being a real driving force. It's not about emotions, it's not about um, different patterns of behavior or whatever, it, it's all about money and uh, using that to have power. So unequal access to resources in society can lead to tensions within the families themselves where the adult members are unable to cope or support each other. Now, there's a bit of a problem with that. Why is it then you still have divorce in upper class couples? Hmm? So there's a, a common argument. There is an answer to that. It's just uh, at face value, this doesn't seem like the best argument. Uh, the stress of being in a struggling or poorer family explains the higher rates of divorce in the working classes. True. The history of divorce represents the privilege of the wealthy in society. So for, for centuries, only the wealthiest could afford a divorce. And that marriage is a way for the upper class to ensure that their wealth comes through inheritance. And we'll talk a bit about that in the next lesson. Moving on. Feminist theory. So feminists argue that we live in a patriarchal society and this is the main force of all inequality and disagreement that exists. So yeah, all inequality is not other things, it is uh, the patriarchy. So radical and Marxist feminists have argued that the institution of marriage represents a patriarchal control. So the engagement ring emphasizes male ownership over the woman the father walking the bride down the aisle to give her away represents male ownership of women, and the wife taking her husband's surname represents male ownership of women. 
So not all of the different feminist perspectives agree on their views of marriage or divorce. However, many recognize that divorce often represents conflict between the unequal gender roles and uh, of women and men in married relationships. So, uh, for example, women might want more independence in their marriage and become frustrated by their husband's refusal to give up his power. Um, in contemporary society, the majority of divorce petitions are fought by women and divorce can stem from these tensions and frustrations. Uh, finishing then, they say not all feminists are necessarily pro-divorce or anti-marriage. Indeed, many feminists are of different perspectives, uh, of all different perspectives, are themselves married, and not, not just to women, the two men as well. So, however, many feminists agree that before divorce laws uh, were changed to enable women to petition for divorce and access legal aid, uh, we'll talk about that next lesson. Many women were trapped in dangerous and abusive relationships, and therefore the changes in the law recognize the need for greater gender equality. And that the more women who petition for divorce to end these unjust relationships adds to the process that can improve gender inequality in society. So these other processes are things like the battle for equal pay, sexist discrimination policies in schools and places of employment, a ban on sexualized imagery of women and men in the media that can be seen by children amongst many other ways. Okay, so here's your task. So we've done the theory, done the reading. You can see three different perspectives, quite different from each other. Go back to your original mind map. I want you to identify which positive or negative outcomes of divorce seem to represent Marxist, functionist, or feminist. So the things which you identified, are, would you say they are more Marxist, functionist, or feminist? And then on a fresh sheet of lined paper, I want you to write your name and today's date. I mean, you don't need to do that. Um, just, I would want you to add this in with your notes. Having discussed this question and listened to what, what I guess I've said, Write your own individual answer to the following question. Explain which perspective or combination of perspectives on divorce you think is most convincing. That's it. You could probably write this in about maybe a paragraph or two paragraphs. No, not much more than that. I'm not asking the world. Don't need to email this in or send this in. You're going to be emailing something to me in the next video. Here is your homework as well. Okay, so... Uh, as I mentioned, this is going to be pretty simple. Go do the reading, answer multiple choice questions. That's it. Nice and easy. Uh, and they're not, sorry, they're not multiple choice questions. Uh, they are true or false. At least I, th I think they're true or false. Either way, it's really easy. So you should have no, uh, no issues with that. Um, you do need to get through this quite quickly to get into the next video because that is a rather important one because at the end there is a 12 mark essay which you will need to do and hand in to me because it will count as part of your grade for this unit. Until then, I will see you in the next video.